One of the questions I got under my video is um, how to implement infinite loading with collection view uh, without using any MVVM stuff. So in this video, we're going to see just that. So here we are in a file new Xamarin Forms application running in Visual Studio for Mac. On the left, you can see the main page running in XAML. On the right, I thought I'd do something different for today. And I have the Android simulator, the Android emulator, I should say, um, running this app, actual application. Um, so as always, let's update the title and let's say collection view loading sample, something like that. Save it. And with the power of hot reload, you can see it automatically updates on the right. So that is very cool. Now, for this demo, I'm going to implement it mostly in the code behind. So if you were using MVVM, um, you should do it a little bit different. I will give you some tips and pointers on how to do that. Um, if you really want to um, me to show you how to do it in MVVM, please let me know in the comments and I'll be sure to make another video or let me know if you have a nice sample that um, you know already does that and that we can share to everyone else. So let me just dive right in. I'm going to remove all these labels right here and I'm going to uh, put in a collection view. I'm going to give that a name because we are going to you know work with um, the code behind. So my collection view, um, let's do that. There we go. Save it. And well, you're not seeing anything because this collection view does not have any items. Um, so actually, I'm going to have to stop and uh, restart the application in a little bit because I'm going to add a little bit of code here. So let's go to the main page and um, go to the code behind right here. Um, so First, let's um, add some things that I'm going to use. So first here at the top, I'm going to do private, it's going to be read only um, random, because I'm going to get some random values. So let's call it randomizer, there we go is new random. Uh, so there's that. And what I want to have is a observable collection and an observable collection observable collection is really cool. Uh, because that automatically lets the collection view or if you're still using a list view, um, lets it know that there is new items so that it should update. Uh, I'm just going to put simple strings in here. Uh, observe observable collection string. Oh, it's messing this up because it doesn't know this type yet. So I'm going to let IntelliSense solve this, click the little uh, light bulb and then say import the right using um, new observable collection string. Oh, I totally forgot the name. Okay, well, um, let's give it a name my items. Here we go. That's better. So I've got a randomizer, which will create random values for us. And I got my items, which will be the item source of our collection view. So actually, um, you know, let's just do that right now. So I'm going to say my collection view dot item source is my items. There we go. So I've got that hooked up. Um, and let's actually, you know, um, private um, let's get that random value thing going private um, let's make it a list of string and uh, get items. And let's give this an integer number of items. There we go. And um, right here, what we're going to do is result list new list string. Um, so there might be a couple of things in here that you, you know, might not want to do. Um, in production code, but you know, uh, this is this is sample code. So I can I can definitely get away with this. Um, so whenever I is less than or equal to number of items, we're going to increment I and I'm going to do result list add randomizer dot next uh, between, you know, let's just give our numbers a little bit of a body. Here we go. Uh, does this add up? One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, there we go. And dot to string because we wanted to have strings. And let's return that one. Return result list. There we go. Okay, so now we have something that can actually get us items. And we have hooked up our item source to our observable collection. Um, so what we want to do so the thing about an observable collection is you want to loop through it. So for 
var s in get items. Um, let's get 50 first. Um, so we're have, gonna have to, um, oh, for each, sorry about that. Um, we're gonna have to loop through that because the regular observable collection does not have any method to add a range or anything. We just have to add all these things together. Um, so um, here we go, my items dot add s. So we're going to populate this with 50 items up front. Uh, and then we set that to the item source. So whenever we do this, we should see 50 items. Um, I'm not going to rerun because that takes a lot of time. You're just gonna have to believe me. Um, and whenever we do this, so the thing that you can use to actually you know, do that infinite loading is my collection view dot remaining item threshold. So this basically says like, hey, if there are still um, the, the number of items that you configure here um, are about to be hit like at the bottom, um, then it's going to um, trigger this event right here or the command right here if you're actually using MVVM. So this is also like the difference between the two things. We're going to show it with the event right now, but if you want to do it, you know, you can just do it with data binding on your view model and do it with that command. So that's right here as well. It's not that too much of a difference, uh, just some um, nuances. So. Um, Let's do it with the event here and let's add that event handler. This looks a little bit funny because my uh, font is zoomed in, but I'm going to press tab here and it's going to add that um, event handler for me right here. So um, here we are. Uh, and of course I need to actually you know, uh, configure that value. I'm not sure what the default value is actually, but remaining item threshold. So you know, whenever you want to start loading early on, you're going to have to make this number bigger because then it starts loading earlier in the process. Um, and whenever you know, you, you're getting like closer to the end um, and you just maybe want to set it to one and only then start loading things. Um, it all kind of depends on like how, what your layout looks like, because if your items are really big, then, you know, you can maybe um, make this item, uh, this, this number smaller, or um, if you are just going to load one more item, then um, you can also make this uh, item a little bit, um, this, this number a little bit lower. Um, it's, it's a bit hard to explain just talking to you about it, but hopefully you will get it and it will become clear whenever we um, actually start doing this. So I'm gonna set this to five, which is just an arbitrary number. So basically whenever it sees like, hey, we only have five items left scrolling down, I'm going to trigger this event right here that we're going to write right now. Um, and um, here is our code going to live that actually loads more items. So what we're going to do here is basically, you know, just duplicate this thing uh, where we're going to get all these and but we maybe want to have um, less items, we just want to load 15 at a time. Of course, you want to do some pagination whenever you're maybe loading something from the server. So you want to say, hey, skip all the items I already have and just get another 10. Um, and also something that's not, that's an, an, an entire topic, entirely a big topic is async await, which is not incorporated in here. So you probably want to, you know, loading items like this is probably a bad idea because this is going to block the UI. Uh, but usually whenever you get items through HTTP, it's going to be async anyway. So that will be solved like almost automatically for you. Um, but you definitely do not want to block the UI with this. But this should, you know, at least get the point across on how to to load more data. So let me just stop this right here and um, restart it for you. And then we will see um, our um, app coming up. Actually, let me get myself out of the way here. And we should see the first 50 items, which are just, you know, random items. And whenever I start scrolling, um, you should never see the end because, you know, it just loads that event. Whenever it sees, we just have five left. So you can see I'm well past the 50 by now, right? So I can just keep scrolling, keep scrolling. Um, and of course, whenever I go really crazy like this, I should reach the end, but it's pretty quick loading some new stuff. Uh, you can see it, I could do it once. Uh, it's not, I can't even do it again. So this is this is pretty good. Um, so you can just keep scrolling, keep scrolling. Um, new stuff will come in. And that is how you implement the infinite loading with a collection view um, through an event. Um, so if you want to do this with the actual MVVM thing, um, actually only the only thing that you need to change is um, change this into the command. And then you just, um, you know, um, hook up that command through data binding and it will trigger that command. But you know, you can 
can still have in your view model the observable collection. Um, that should be the same, only you should data bind it to the item source instead of um, um, assigning it this way. So um, if you can figure it out for MVVM, please let me know. I got this specific question for doing it in code behind, so I thought I'd made a video about that. If you want to do it in MVVM and you can't figure it out, please let me know in the comments. Or if you want to see something else about the collection view, maybe something together with the swipe view to get those contact actions going, um, let me know in the comments and I'll be sure to um, record something for you. And now you know how to keep your users hooked in your application. Just, you know, whenever they maybe reach the bottom, almost just load those new items in and keep those people hooked in your application by infinitely loading new data. Now you know how. If you want to do it in MVVM, I said it multiple times, I'll say it again. Please let me know in the comments and I'll be sure to make a video on that as well. Or, you know, just take this sample and try to do it yourself. Let me know how it goes. And if you have any questions, um, just reach out and I will do my very best to answer you. Or if you want to see any other topic, please let me know. For this video, I hope you liked it. And if you did, please click that like button, click that subscribe button to be part of this wonderful growing community. And I can just, you know, have that plus one, we can grow in numbers, it will be totally amazing. And for everything else, I will see you for the next video and keep coding.